All right. Hi, everyone. We are from the Wisconsin Society of Pharmacy Students, part of Operation Women's Health, here to talk to you today about the human papillomavirus, or HPV. This is just a disclaimer saying that the pharmacy students giving this presentation are representing the UW School of Pharmacy and the Wisconsin Society of Pharmacy Students and are not licensed professionals. We cannot recommend or advise about specific vaccinations. Any questions regarding decisions or diagnosis need to be discussed with a doctor or other healthcare professional. So here's our outline today for our presentation. We're gonna talk about viruses, cancer, statistics on HPV, HPV transmission, signs and symptoms, HPV in men, cervical cancer, and then the HPV vaccine. So first we'll start out with viruses. A virus is a non-living infectious agent. They use you, the host, to replicate and make you sick. Some examples of viruses you probably already know about are the common cold and influenza or the flu. Next, we'll dive into the basics about cancer. So I'm sure we have all heard about cancer before, but what happens in cancer? Normally, our bodies can control how much our cells grow and divide. We can even kill off abnormal cells in our body and if, they make, if our body makes a mistake along the way. In cancer, abnormal cells grow uncontrollably. These abnormal cells can invade our normal cells, and this is what we call cancer. Almost every tissue of the body can be affected. Now on to HPV statistics. HPV infection is common. According to the CDC, there are about 43 million HPV infections in 2018. The good news is not in all infections lead to cancer. There are about 45,300 HPV associated cancers in the US each year. There is an HPV vaccine and the immunization rates are rising. According to the CDC, 18 to 26 year olds who received recommended number of doses rose from 13.8% in 2013 to 21.5% in 2018. But there's more work to be done. We can prevent HPV associated cancer by getting vaccinated. Okay, so how does HPV spread? HPV or the human papillomavirus is a group of about 100 different viruses, 40 of which are sexually transmitted. Of these different types of viruses, there are certain strains that are more likely to cause diseases, such as cancer and genital warts. The strains that more frequently cause cancer are known as high-risk strains, and these include types 16 and 18. The strains that are more likely to cause genital warts are known as low-risk strains, and this includes types 6 and 11. HPV is spread through sexual contact, particularly vaginal and anal sex. However, oral sex and genital-to-genital -genital contact can also cause transmission. People can have an HPV infection but not notice any symptoms. So if they are sexually active, they can expose their partners to HPV without knowing about it. Most, um, so onto the signs and symptoms of HPV. Uh, most people who are infected with HPV do not have any symptoms or they're asymptomatic and they don't even realize that they have the virus. Usually the infection goes away without any treatment. 90% of the time, the body's immune system clears HPV within two years, and the person who is infected never knows that they had it. Sometimes HPV infection can cause genital warts in males and females. Other types of HPV may lead to different types of cancer over time, including cervical, vaginal, penile, and anal cancer. HPV is responsible for more than 90% of all anal and cervical cancers, 70% of vaginal cancers, and 60% of penile cancers. So boys, you might be thinking, how does HPV affect me? Is HPV just a woman's health issue? No, it's absolutely not. HPV can cause many problems in men, such as genital warts, penile cancer, anile cancer, and oral pharyngeal cancer. This is cancer of the throat, tongue, and tonsils. So one of the most frequent um, problems associated with HPV is cervical cancer. 13 of the 100 strains of HPV have been linked to the development of cervical cancer. The virus can infect cells in the cervix, which is tissue that connects the vagina and the uterus. HPV disrupts the normal cell cycle and turns the normal cervical cell into a cancer cell. 
Not all HPV infections lead to cancer, but about 10% of women with HPV of their cervix will develop a long-lasting infection, increasing their risk of developing cervical cancer. Each year, about 12,000 women in the U.S. are diagnosed with cervical cancer. These rates differ in different parts of the U.S., as demonstrated by this graphic, which shows the rate of new HPV-associated cancers by state per 100,000 people. Rates are particularly high in the Southeast. More than 4,000 women die from cervical cancer each year. Fortunately, most cervical cancers can be prevented with regular screenings. A pap smear is a type of test that can find cervical cancer early on when it is still highly treatable. The test involves collecting cells from the cervix and sending them to the lab to be examined for signs of cancer. While a pap smear can detect cervical cancer, it cannot detect HPV infection. It is recommended that women start getting pap smears every three years starting at the age of 21. So there is a vaccine to help prevent HPV. Uh, the HPV vaccine, which is known as Gardasil 9, can help prevent cervical cancer and genital warts caused by HPV, although it does not treat these diseases in people who already have them. Gardasil 9 is a nine-valent vaccine, meaning that it protects against nine different strains of the HPV virus. The vaccine protects against strains 6, 11, 16, 18, 31, 33, 45, 52, and 58. As you may recall from earlier, strains 16 and 18 are associated with the development of cancer, whereas 6 and 11 are associated with the development of genital warts. Gardasil 9 is given as a two-dose series. It is recommended that both male and female children first receive the vaccine at 11 or 12 years of age, although it can be given as early as nine years old, since it offers more protection if it is given before becoming sexually active and potentially being exposed to the virus. After the first vaccination is given, the second should be given six months later. If someone has not received the HPV vaccine in the recommended time frame, they should receive catch-up HPV vaccination through the age of 18. If they are 15 or older at the time of the first vaccination, they require a three-dose series, with the second shot being given after six months and the third being given 12 months after the first. If someone is first vaccinated after becoming sexually active, the vaccine will not protect against any previous exposures to HPV, but it will protect against future exposures. Even if someone has already had an HPV infection in the past, the vaccine can still prevent them from getting other strains of the HPV virus in the future, so it is still recommended. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website offers more information on HPV and HPV vaccination.